tonight i'm sharing on the mystery of strongholds the mystery of strongholds second corinthians chapter 10 from verse 4 the mystery of strongholds this is a powerful secret of dominion this is a powerful secret of legislature in the realm of the spirit the mystery of strongholds second corinthians chapter 10 second corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4 10 and verse 4 when you read from verse 3 it says for though we walk in the flesh it says our warfare listen carefully this is paul speaking now one who was granted access paul called himself a steward of the mystery he didn't call himself a preacher paul didn't call himself there were people who were called men of god in the bible an example elijah an example samuel paul never called himself a man of god he called himself a steward of the mystery one who was given access to the mysteries that so that when we listen to him we might be partakers of that fellowship called in a participation to come into an understanding of that mystery and this was one of the mysteries he said for though we walk in the flesh our warfare is not physical listen carefully our warfare is not physical and then he says in verse 4 it says for the weapons of our warfare so warfare is for sure but he's guiding you on how to engage it listen living is warfare prosperity is warfare growth is warfare but he's giving us the character of this he's saying the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god and the entire arsenal is supposed to achieve one purpose to pull down not enemies strongholds what kind of warfare is this that the enemy is not a human being he never said to pull down spirits think about that he didn't even say to pull down demons that this warfare God had to give you the tools to use. And he says this fight is not against flesh and blood. That the fight is not even against demons. Not to pull down demons. To pull down strongholds. This is warfare now. Next verse. Casting down what? Spirits. Demons. Satan imaginations the greek word yes are and every high thing not high person high thing high information that exalted itself against the person every high thing that exalts itself above another kind of knowledge this is warfare that god gave you these tools please get what i'm teaching you tonight that this fight is not against flesh and blood but that this fight huh god gave you these spiritual tools to pull down strongholds to cast imaginations to dethrone high things and then to bring thoughts strongholds imaginations high things thoughts this is warfare bible says a spirit can live in a man follow me carefully a spirit can live in a man and that there is a possibility of casting that spirit out of a man is that true where does the spirit go to when you cast the spirit the bible says it moves around dry lands everywhere is that true and then it becomes restless what makes it restless then the bible says after a while it will turn back he never said i will go to the body he said i will still go back to my house now question a spirit is somewhere 
no prayer no prophet no anointing something casted it from there back into a human being that required a man of god to cast it out what made the spirit uncomfortable with an environment that it left on its own without the particular desire of a man to, to drive it think about this if this guy has a demon spirit and i lay hands on him and cast out the demon spirit i thought if the demon spirit is somewhere somebody should be able to drive it back but the demon says on his own that environment without any human intervention does something to that demon spirit that makes it restless the same way a man of god's anointing is driving it and he starts moving back and say it is even better compared to what i am facing here it is better to go back to that human being in matthew chapter 4 you also find that account in luke chapter 4 watch this when jesus went to fast i want to tell you certain things about strongholds and about this we're going to pray but i want there are things that believers that's why i told you i struggle to share what i'm sharing there is a whole series on this that is coming jesus the bible declares that jesus is the embodiment of the godhead is that true and the bible calls him full of grace and truth now jesus goes to fast hey, Jimmy, jesus is fasting and satan is waiting for him instead of the fasting to drive demons the fasting was attracting satan listen <laughs> satan is not afraid of jesus satan is not even afraid of the fact that jesus is fasting this is jesus being the son of god alone should command respect then fasting for 40 days no food no water satan is not afraid then satan comes to jesus looks at jesus jesus is looking at him back i thought satan would be rolling and shouting and moving up and down church has never scared satan the presence of god has never scared satan listen carefully <laughs> just just take it in first like an injection let it enter and settle down then we'll continue in the book of job job chapter one the bible says once upon a time the sons of god went to show themselves to the lord is that true and the bible says satan at that time he had fallen otherwise god would not ask him where are you coming from is that true hmm. satan goes before god and he said where are you coming from he said from moving to and fro the earth what location the earth and he says have you considered my servant job and then this is what satan says there was something you put around job he never said job's prayer he never said job's fasting i every time i came to job i saw that there was something that surrounded him that i could not even touch him it made me uncomfortable i could not remain with job and he said take that thing away and watch what how i will rubbish job what was satan's request it not make me more powerful not make job more powerful whatever it is and this is what job said in the days of my youth when the secrets of the lord was upon my tabernacle those secrets built a fortification in the realm of the spirit and the bible says satan came not a demon he came by himself whether job was praying or not the fortifications were there he was a man of prayer he was a man of power satan feared job but he stood before god satan feared job but he went before god and stood he said i couldn't stand before this guy but i can come to stand before you it's your bible i'm, I'm not reading a, a, a it's your bible are you getting blessed and then all of that began to happen and job's life went down and then job's life came back again now watch this in luke chapter 4 let's go back to our text give us luke chapter 4 jesus 
just finished praying and fasting you are praying now you are fasting is that true in your mind you believe that this praying and fasting you are doing is supposed to drive out all kinds of demons there is only a kind that prayer and fasting drives says jesus our chief mentor and apostle this kind this kind there is a kind because of the nature of their operation that praying and fasting we are fasting together so listen to what i'm telling you now look at how this verse starts please listen jesus comma being full of the holy ghost again then goes to fast i mean he, he returned from jordan and was led of the spirit into the wilderness jesus the bread of life the holy ghost number two fasting added prayer 40 days then let's see what happens after 40 days he was tempted of the devil satan came to tempt jesus that word tempt dear is a very interesting word please follow me and the bible says and he was hungry verse 3 verse 3 and the devil said so this is the tempting now the bible says satan tempted him and the other verses are explaining the content of the temptation are we together how did satan tempt jesus if thou be the son of god command this stone that it be made bread verse 4 and jesus answered satan talked to jesus and was not afraid jesus the word put the word in his lips and was speaking that word did not cast out satan please listen to me i want you to be so powerful and should be so free we have inherited a lot of religion and this is why we keep doing a lot of things and there are no results in our lives listen listen carefully he said jesus said to him answered satan asked jesus a question jesus is replying back remember this is jesus and satan if they were angels they'll say this guy is wasting his time somewhere satan came directly to jesus what makes you think he will not come to you he went to the throne he went to the son that man shall not live jesus said it is written now this one we can we can dwell here forever because this is jesus the word and yet he's saying it is written he didn't say i said he went to scripture it is written the bible says all scriptures were inspired by the holy ghost and jesus still said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of god and that was him standing man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of god and jesus is standing and satan is not afraid what was wrong with his confession was it the scripture that was wrong or the person was unholy or the utterance was wrong and satan still stood if you get what i'm teaching you you will know why regardless of what people are doing it looks like satan still remains now listen this is even the fearful part temptation number two satan take him up how did he do it satan take not the baby jesus jesus who had received the baptism of the holy ghost satan told him come and he took him into a high mountain now this is the fearful part and showed him all the kingdoms of the world just flash like that and then here was satan's proposal look how shameless satan is we don't know how shameless he is that's why we think just by standing as they said and live my life and you will leave you you are joking you watch what happened between him and jesus and the devil said unto him again this is the living word this is the logos of god all this power i will please talk to me what was the power that he would give him anointing what did he call power the kingdoms the systems the governments he called them power i will give you and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever i will 
I give it. Do you know what Satan was telling Jesus? In heaven you drove me, but this one is my territory. Are we together now? I have influenced the government. I have influenced the system. This one belongs to me. If you ever see anybody rise, I made it happen. And so you better negotiate with me. This is Satan. He's not unaware that this is the living logos. But he tells him, how can I be in a territory and you want to lift somebody and bypass me? He said, look, let me tell you. This is what you are trying to look for. He made it flash before him. And he said, I will give you. He called all of them power. The question is how did he get it? I used to think he just got it from Adam. Yes, he got the keys from Adam. But how did he get the governments? How did he get the systems to a point that he says it is my own? I will give anybody I want to give it. So we are seeing that Satan got this anointing himself from God. He said, I have set this so that was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou does walk up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Most people just teach that all Satan was doing was worship in heaven. Um, it's not exactly so. Yes, it is true that his description, he said, that was perfect in thy ways in, in the day that that was created till iniquity was found. Every angel has a will. Satan too has a will. There is nobody in heaven and on earth that is serving God by force. They can choose to rebel. That's why when Satan chose to rebel, listen carefully, God himself had respect for his rebellion. But when you make whatever decision, you'll be ready for the consequence. Now watch this. Let's see how this corrupted anointing worked. If you don't understand this, you will be surprised. Ejimi, this is heaven where God dwells. Lucifer's anointing is corrupted. And Lucifer's anointing in the presence of God, the epicenter of heaven, influenced one third of the angels. One third. This is heaven where God dwells. And the power of that anointing exerted something on their wheels. Their wheels. He never chained any angel. Look at the warfare that happened in heaven. That Satan, what did he say to the angels that they preferred him to God? Look at the throne room and the 24 elders. Yet Satan came with an anointing and spoke something. And one third of the angels said, we will give up the throne room for you. Thou anointed cherub that covereth. Are you seeing how he won the kings of the earth in a moment? Are you seeing how he won the governments and the systems? And he came to Jesus. He said, have you forgotten? I am still anointed. Though corrupted. Anyone you want with influence is under my care. There is an anointing. I was the light bearer of heaven. Satan is a master at manipulating the minds of people. Look how easy he entered Peter. Peter close to jesus he just came at will in the presence of jesus and jesus looked and said this is satan peter this is not you peter did not even know this is how easy it is jesus was on a mission satan distracted jesus to a mountain jesus had to return back the anointed cherub let me show you where the power of satan is it's not just in witchcraft the power of satan is in his ability to capture the wheels of men of systems of governments you see that so give us second corinthians 10 again paul was watching this in a vision while it was being shown him and paul said so this is it the weapons of our warfare are not carnal it's not just about demons and spirits because a demon is in the wilderness and there was no human being to occupy and on his own there he said i will go back where humans are because in the wilderness there are no wheels it's inanimate let me go where there are human wheels and then i manipulate them listen satan controls the earth by controlling the minds and controlling systems and controlling governments.
this is a mystery that I show you when Satan comes to you he will not tie your hands he is a master there is an anointing the very power of God working in him and until God fortifies you you will fall for his deceit Satan desired to sift you like wheat he's telling Peter Satan desired whereas Peter had already fallen since this is powerful Peter Satan came to him are you seeing why Satan entered Judas look how easy it was for him to come into the camp of Jesus and just manipulate people to the point that he almost got Jesus Gethsemane Jesus was there father ah, and he said no nevertheless not my will listen Satan went to the wife of, a, of Herod and gave her a dream to advise her husband and she got up and said I had a dream this man is innocent don't kill him he looks like a good thing if they didn't kill Jesus there would not be salvation Satan for you are we together he's a master manipulator if God does not help you your mind is a child's play for him he will beat you at this game there is an anointing on him Satan in heaven that there is a roll call he was talking to the angels one by one the billions of angels in heaven he won one third of them to the point that they were ready to dismember themselves and leave their original estate this is the one we are dealing with and Paul said listen your focus should be on this mind the mystery of strongholds that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal right but to the pulling down of strongholds that's God's emphasis you want to win Satan pull down strongholds cast down imaginations 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 why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing Genesis 11 nothing they have chosen to do that they have imagined cast down imagination so the Bible says let this mind be in you Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 let this mind there is a kind of mind that must be in you which was also in Christ Jesus let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus that without this mind being in you that was also in Christ Jesus Satan will beat you at the game hands down there is an anointing he deceived angels in the presence of God Satan came to Jesus and attempted to sway Jesus the first time he didn't quote a scripture then when Jesus replied him he took him to the mountain then the third time he quoted scripture they shall keep the charge it is not the quoting of scripture that brings victory my brother my sister that's why Satan can be in a meeting a demon can be with someone a pastor is preaching an anointed man is preaching the demon is joining the person who is inside listening to say hallelujah he's clapping he doesn't stop you and all of a sudden something happens and the same demon starts jumping out didn't he fear the praise and worship how many times did they yell the name of Jesus shout Jesus everybody you shouted Jesus he was still there quiet that's how you can share the grace the grace of our Lord Jesus he will share it with you and live to the most important part of you that Satan wants is not your body the most important part of you that Satan wants is not your spirit the most important part of you that Satan wants is your mind understand this your mind interfaces your body and your spirit when satan gets your mind he gets two for one he gets your body and your spirit this is the bible i'm showing you because for years i kept wondering why it looked like satan was not afraid of many things about god you close your bible and lie down on it and sleep yet the demons come and press you how many of you have fasted three days dry and on the third day you had a wicked dream demons came and oppress you you've not even broken the fast you spent time blasting in tongues and you came to us men of God and we said you don't have faith it's a lie 
It's a lie. There are not many things Satan is afraid of. I've listed some of them for you. We think he fears everything. No, sir. Satan is never afraid of the presence of God. He's only afraid of what the presence of God does to you. You, not the presence of God. There are people who make this Bible in publishing homes that are currently filled with demons inside them. Yet they are publishing Bibles. I have ministered deliverance to pastors mighty men and women of God with power who are also themselves anointed to deliver people the mystery of strongholds that Satan captures territories and captures individuals by doing something to their minds this is what is called witchcraft here's what Paul said oh foolish Galatians who has bewitched you not about drinking blood and eating flesh he sells a proposition to you in a way and manner that will force you to receive it and by it you give up the power do you know if jesus saw that kingdom and did that satan would rather collect salvation and give him kingdom remember jesus was about to be coronated after his death to be given a name that is above all names both of things in heaven on earth and under the earth and satan said let me give you on earth it looked like a wonderful idea are we together so paul says we are not unaware of his not his power satan has many devices many 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 devices from the word stratomai devices different ways he can come up with all kinds of plans to manipulate the minds of believers this is jesus satan stands before god and talks to god and god still respected the free will of satan listen I'm going to tell you some I know that I've attacked so many things today and many people now will insult me again because of all of this but let me tell you this I love the body of Christ but I want you to be powerful for many years we were taught that Satan can never access the presence of God it's a lie it's a lie it's not true there was no place for him found in heaven means that the office he occupied was no longer there but he could access the presence of God he still can in the New Testament or at least in the ministry of Jesus Satan came to Jesus many times he came to Jesus in Peter he came to Jesus in Judas he came to Jesus by himself he was not afraid it is not the presence of God that scares so that you have the Holy Spirit inside you and then people say there's nowhere satan can come close to you be careful jesus luke chapter 4 verse 1 was full of the holy ghost and yet satan came to him after fasting you would think the fasting would have driven him away is that true but after the fasting was attracting him and he came but there was something jesus did he didn't just say it is written it is written what was satan looking for remember that whole thing was about words and information there is an information and jesus gave him another information the moment he found out that jesus was informed the bible says he withdrew so when satan comes to you he does not search he searches for if what do you have what residue of mystery do you have what do you know about him and what don't you know about him and he can manipulate you and beat you hands down brothers and sisters what does satan tell a man that makes him to join occult what does satan tell a man that he can carry his child and slaughter the child and while blood is coming out he's laughing satan was not there holding the knife the influence was the strength of the man by himself satan only left him with an information and went to bed and that man slaughters the child What does Satan tell a man 
that he dedicates a whole land to Satan. An intelligent man. Look at Jezebel. Look at Jezebel. Under her watch, the powers that be, if you serve God Almighty, you have to go on hiding. The prophets of Baal were flourishing because a woman who sat on the seat of government could manipulate the minds. Look at what Satan did to Herodias. A small girl dances before a man and then a man comes and says, what do you want? Even if it's up to half of my kingdom, I will give you. Is that normal? Listen. One of the ways Satan has destroyed our lives and our families is through witchcraft. But it is not witchcraft as we know. He uses our imagination and distracts us into thinking it is just the drinking blood part of it and the old woman there. Whereas the true point of access of victory is something that he does to our minds and our imaginations to keep us through. Listen. Satan does not walk the way we think he is. That he pursues you as an individual. He doesn't have that time. Do you know what it takes for Satan to zoom his attention on you? No. He just puts little demons around to just supervise what he has done. When you are about deviating here, they just coordinate you. One sickness, one headache just to bring you back. Like a buffer solution. But Satan himself, he's on earth. Satan is on earth. My question is, who now is in his mind? That's the person you should respect. Who now is giving Satan sleeplessness? When Satan comes to Zaria, if he's to talk to one person, who will it be? Who is Satan so threatened? My assignment is to make you that person. That there is something about your understanding. That the moment you go home in two weeks, everyone who is not saved is saved. Doors are opened. And they say, what is all this? We believe in bowing down to a shrine. But you came to this house and favor started coming. Listen, this is what happened when God wanted to lift Joseph. All the diviners had a formula for getting answers. And God shut the heaven and said, Joseph, go. The people were surprised. The king was disappointed. You are my wise men. You are my sorcerers. And you could not interpret my dream. And the Lord brought Joseph. And they were watching, ready to laugh. Like Janus and Jambes. That's why they were surprised. Moses, where did you come from? Who taught you how to turn a rod? He said, I met with another man. I, I had an encounter. The anointed cherub that covereth. Like an eagle spread her wings. He covers businesses. He covers great men. He covers husbands. He covers wives. He covers families. And says nobody comes within this circumference without making allegiance to me. So Paul says, when you are about to fight warfare, don't just focus on that spirit. Trying to find out what is the name of the spirit. The spirit too is on assignment. The real thing to conquer is the programming. Is someone ready to pray tonight? Open your mouth and begin to bless him.